In this video, we're going to be using Scratch to create ourselves a little game called a Space Shooter. And basically, we've got this little uh, spaceship down the bottom of the page here that can move left and right along the bottom of the screen. Uh, we've also got this little bat that's going to come down in, from random positions at the top of the page and it's going to try and run into the spaceship. We do have bullets where we can shoot this bat, and I'll just run the game now and show you what it looks like. You can only shoot one bullet at a time. You can see each time I, I'll just stop that. Each time I um, shoot the bat, I get one point. Okay, so it's a fairly simple game. Um, it's not too hard to make. So let's get started. I'm going to go to File and New, and make myself a new Scratch document, and the Scratch Cat's going to appear on our stage, which we need to get rid of first of all. So just right-click on the little thumbnail down there in the library and delete it. Now before we get started, let's choose a backdrop for our stage. Okay, so the stage is the white area here. Okay, it's where all the action takes place. So we'll put a backdrop in there by going down the bottom and choosing that first option that says Choose Backdrop from Library. Plenty of backdrops to choose here. The one I'm going to go for is a themed back backdrop in space. And I'm going to choose the stars. That space one there might look all right as well. Okay, if you want to use that one, go for it. But I'm just going to use stars for this one. It's a um, pr pretty simple background, not too distracting. Okay, so that's got our backdrop in. Once we have got our backdrop in, we need to bring some sprites in that we're going to use in this game. Okay, so one of the sprites that we're going to use is obviously the spaceship. So where you've got the new sprite option here, click the little troll's head to choose a sprite from the library. We're going to use some sprites that Scratch has created for us. Now I'm going to go back to the space theme over here, and you'll see in the space theme we've got a spaceship. So choose the spaceship and press on OK. It comes out fairly large, we do need to resize that. Now in my previous video I did show you how to resize one way, in this video I'm going to show you how to resize another way. So up the top here we've got this shrink option. So if you press shrink and then click a few times on that spaceship you can get it down to a reasonable size. That looks pretty good there. I'm just going to move it somewhere down the bottom, it doesn't matter where just yet. Okay. Uh, the next sprite we're going to bring in is the bat. Okay, so I'm going to create another sprite, and I'm going to click on Animals. And the very first animal in your library is the bat. So let's click on OK. And you'll notice that it's called bat number one. If you hit the information symbol on the top left of that bat icon, just get rid of the one and just call it bat. Okay, so we've got spaceship, and we've got bat. Again, the bat's a little bit too big, so use your shrink tool up here to click on that bat a few times, just to bring him down to a more appropriate size that's going to go well with our game. That looks pretty good there. Just push him somewhere up top of the page for now. The last sprite that we need to bring in is one that we're going to make ourselves. Okay, so where we've got new sprites there, instead of hitting that little troll, we're going to hit the little paintbrush next to that to paint a new sprite. I want you to grab the circle tool or the ellipse tool here. I want you to change this outline here to the second option there, which is the fill. So when we draw this circle, it's going to be filled in with a color. At the moment, that color is black. We want to change that to a bright color like yellow. A bit hard to see, but there is a little crosshair in the center of your page there. You want to hold shift and click and draw a little circle over the top of that crosshair. You need to make sure that that's centered on the page. And the way to do that is bring up Set Costume Center, this little crosshair up here. And you can pick that up and just move it around to the center of the circle and drop it once it's in the center of the circle. Once you've done that you can move your mouse away. You'll see the crosshair follows your mouse but that's okay. Alrighty. So now you've got your little um, bullet sprite on the screen as well. Okay so you've got the three sprites we need to make this game work. So let's go back to our spaceship over here. Okay. And we're going to go to our scripts tab at the top there. And we're going to code this spaceship up to make it work. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get it in the right position. And I want it positioned somewhere down the bottom of my page. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my events section first and bring out the when the start button is clicked or when the green flag is clicked. And I'm going to go to the motion and I'm going to choose the go to X and Y option here. So go to X and Y. Now remember our page is made up of coordinates a bit like this. okay. Basically we want to set our little spaceship in the center of the page at the bottom. So our X coordinate to put it in the center of the page is going to be set to zero. 
Okay, so in this little blue box where it says minus 7 at this stage on mine, I'm going to set that X to 0. Now for the Y option, I want it towards the bottom of the page, so somewhere down here. About there is probably a good height. And you can see my Y value is set to minus 180. Okay, that's where my mouse cursor is now. If I hover my mouse cursor over the spaceship now, you can see that the Y value changes to minus 123. As I move my spaceship around, it's going to tell me what that Y value is. So I think about probably minus 125 will probably look good. So I'm going to set that Y value to minus 125. Okay, so if I move my spaceship anywhere on the page, and when I press this green flag, it should position it in the center, which is the X position, and down the bottom, which is the Y position. Okay, so that's our starting point. Alright, so that's a good start. Next thing I'm going to do is get this little spaceship to move left and right. So when we press our left arrow, we want it to move left, obviously. When we press our right arrow, we want it to move to the right. Okay, so we need to bring in a new event for this. So we'll bring out when the start button is clicked again. And what we're going to do is go to the control tab here and we're going to choose an if then statement. Okay, so if a certain criteria is met, then we're going to perform a certain action. Okay, so the criteria that needs to be met is if we are pressing the left arrow on our keyboard. So we go to our sensing option here and we've got the key pressed option that we bring out. At the moment it's got the space bar, we want to change that to the left arrow. So if the key left arrow is pressed, then we want to move our little spaceship to the left. And the way we do that is go back to our motion and we go to change X by minus 10. Okay, remember if we want to move to the left, we always head into the negatives. Okay, so we're heading to the left of our timeline basically, so we're going to move at minus 10, that's about a speed of 10. Alright, if we want to move right, we're basically going to do the same thing here, but we're going to use the right arrow and we're going to change X by plus 10. So I'm going to duplicate this code. A quick way to duplicate this code is go up the top to this little clone stamp here, or the duplicate stamp, and just click on that piece of code once, and you can drag down the next piece of code. So what we're going to say in this second bit of code is if key right arrow is pressed, then change the X value to 10. Okay, and that's going to move our little spaceship to the right at speed 10. What we can do now is put those two pieces of code together. Now if we were to run that code now, it wouldn't work. I'll just show you what happens. Doesn't move left and right. I'm pressing the left and right keys right now and nothing's happening. And the reason for that is we need to put this in a forever loop. So in our control tab, we need to bring out this loop here and put it around. I don't know if this is going to work. There we go. Around those two sections of code. That way our program is always listening out for when we press our left arrow and always listening out for when we press our right arrow. So now we can attach that to when the start button's clicked. We're always going to be listening for when we press the left arrow or the right arrow. Now when I run my game, we should be able to move left and we should be able to move right. Can't move up, can't move down. Okay, our spaceship is stuck at the bottom of the page there. Okay, he doesn't quite go off the edge of the page, but that's fine. We've got him moving left and right, and that's what we want. Okay, last thing I might do on this spaceship is put in a background sound. So we've got some music playing when we run our game. Now the way we do that, we need to go to our Sounds tab first and find the music we want. Okay, this pop sound is no good to us, so we'll just get rid of that. We'll hit the little speaker here, and I'm going to go down to Music Loops. You can go through all these and choose whatever music loop you want. Um, one that I might use is Medieval 1. Sounds a little bit eerie, I suppose. We're in space, so we want to keep things a little bit spooky. Okay, if you press play on that, you can have a listen to it. Not the best music, but that's what we're stuck with at the moment. Okay, so what we're going to do is bring in another event on our spaceship. So when the start button is clicked, what we want to do is play the sound Medieval 1 until done. Okay, now that's going to play through once and then finish. What we want to do is put that in a loop 
So another forever loop, so it continues to play. So once it's finished playing once, it will go back to the start and play itself again. Okay, so I'm just going to put a forever loop around that. Now make sure when you're choosing that sound, you choose the play sound medieval one until done. Okay, it's a common mistake to choose that first option, play sound medieval one. Okay, as I found out in my first tutorial there, that doesn't work. You need to choose play sound medieval one until done. Okay, now when we play our game, we'll have some background music. Okay, so that sounds all well and good. So that's basically our spaceship all coded up. Okay. What we can do now is go and code up the bat. So on this bat, okay, the first thing we want to do is get him moving. So basically he's going to start at the top of the page here and he's going to fall down from random positions and we've got to try and dodge him using our spaceship. Okay, if the bat hits the spaceship, then it's game over. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is get this bat to start in a position along the x-axis at the top of the page. Okay, if I just go back to my little graph uh, coordinates here, we basically want him to start anywhere along the x-axis, so that's the horizontal axis, but he needs to start up the top of the y-axis somewhere. Okay, anywhere on that top of that y-axis. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in an event when we click the start button. What we want to do is go to our motion first of all and choose the go to x and y options. Okay, we're going to get the computer to choose the X position. Okay, so we're going to go to operators here and choose pick random. And in between there, we're going to put minus 220 to 220. And basically, that's going to pick anywhere between about here and over here. So somewhere along the X axis for our little bat to start. Okay, it's going to be a random number. So it's going to fall from random positions. The Y value, okay, we want it set to an exact position. Okay, so if we look at this Y value down here, it's at minus 180 now, but as I move my mouse cursor around, you can see that that value changes. So I want my bat to drop out of the sky from roughly that height, so about 130, 135 for the Y value. So I might make that 135. Okay, so if I press the green flag now, you can see that's where the bat was going to start. Y value at 135 and it chose anywhere along that X axis as a random number. Okay, so that's its starting point. The next thing we want it to do is to fall from the sky. So glide down to the bottom. The way we do that is go back to the motion tab here and there's an option about halfway down that says glide one second to X and Y coordinates. So come and snap that into the bottom of your code. Now one second's a little bit quick, so I'm going to go for glide two seconds. So it's going to take two seconds to hit, go from the top to the bottom. And we're going to get it to pick another random position on the x-axis. Okay, so it's going to be the same as this green piece of code. So I'm going to right-click on that green bit of code and just duplicate it and drop it in to this x section here. So again, glide two seconds to x and it's going to pick a random number. So it's going to start in a random position along the top here and it's going to fall down and finish at a random position along the bottom here. Okay, we need to tell it where to finish up exactly so it needs to finish up somewhere down here roughly. So that's about Y, I'll say one, minus 155. Okay, I was just looking at the little Y value there to work out where that position would be. So all right, minus 155. Now if I start my game, we should see the bat fall from the top of the page to the bottom. But he stops once he hits the bottom. What we need to do is bring in a forever loop. So that piece of code, so this section here, it repeats over and over again. So we've got numerous bats falling from the top of the page. So let's put our forever loop around that and try again. We'll see what happens. So there's our first bat going down. There's the second one. So now you can see the bat starting at random positions across the top, finishing at random positions along the bottom. Okay, and it's taking two seconds to fall from the top to the bottom. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. That's the majority of our game already coded up, so it's looking good. Another thing we're going to do, when the bat hits the spaceship, we want our game to finish. Okay, so we need to make a new event. So we're still clicked on the bat here. I'm going to bring out a new when the start button is clicked. What we're going to do is an if then statement again. So if 
in the sensing tab now we need to choose the first one that says touching I should say spaceship so if the bat is touching the spaceship make sure you've chosen spaceship from that drop down menu then we're going to go back to control and choose stop all that basically stops our game okay so snap those bits occurred together so when clicked if the bat is touching the spaceship then stop the game now we need to put a forever loop around this so that our game is always listening out for that collision okay if we don't put that forever loop there it's not going to work so we need to have that loop going on so our game is constantly listening out to see if our bat is touching the spaceship if it is then it's going to stop our game so let's have a look we'll run our game we should be able to dodge the first bat let's hit this one okay so as soon as the bat hits that spaceship our game stops all right looking good the other thing we want to do is get some scores going on okay so we want to be able to shoot this bullet to hit that bat and when that bullet hits the bat we get some scores or we get a score okay so we need to code up this little sprite here or our bullet at the moment it's called sprite one I want to rename that so I'm gonna hit that little information symbol in the corner there and I'm gonna call it bullet because this is a bullet that's gonna come out of our spaceship okay so it gets a little bit confusing but bear with me and we'll see how we go in the bullet we've got a blank canvas over here for our coding we're gonna to go to events and we're gonna put in when the start button is clicked okay first thing we're going to do is get that bullet to go exactly where our spaceship is and the way we do that is you go to our motion options here and we're going to choose the go to X and Y um, feature and the X and Y values we want them to be exactly the same as the spaceship so we go to sensing and we scroll down and we see this option called X position of at the moment it says bat I want to change that to spaceship so I'm going to put in to the first little box there. Oops, just drop that. Go to X is X position of spaceship. Now I'm going to change that over here from X posi position to Y position. And I'm going to move that up to the Y position where it says Y position of spaceship. So when we click the start button, basically our bullet is going to go to the same X and Y positions where the spaceship is. So watch this. As I run it, you'll see that bullet disappear because it's hiding behind our spaceship okay so that's all well and good the other thing I'm going to do now in looks is actually hide that bullet even though we can't see it behind the spaceship we just want to hide it anyway okay so it is there but it's just invisible at the moment all right so the next thing we want to do is get this bullet moving when we press the space bar basically we want the bullet to go straight up in the air okay so it's fairly simple to do we're going to go over to our control tab here and we're going to bring out an if then statement basically we need to be checking if we're pressing the space bar if we are then we're going to shoot the bullet so in the if then statement we go to our sensing uh, options here and we choose the key space pressed and put it between the words if and then so that's saying if we are pressing the space bar then what do we want to happen the first thing we want to happen is for our bullet to reappear at wherever our spaceship is so it's the same line of code as up here so I'm going to right click on that blue section of code and duplicate it and just drop it in this section here the hide can disappear so just get rid of that by dragging it away so it's basically saying if we press the space bar then we're going to have the bullet reappear on our page at the same position of the spaceship remember when we run our game our spaceships gonna move left or right okay so it's gonna change from that original position okay so it's gonna reappear at this new position wherever our spaceships move to and then we're gonna go to looks and we're gonna show it so it's still gonna be hidden behind the spaceship but it's actually on our screen now okay once it is on our screen we want it to go up so we want it to start moving and the way we get it to start moving is in the motion tab here and we just move it 10 steps just put it below the show there alrighty now we need to wrap this up in a forever loop so this code will always be working throughout our game if we put it in now it might work for a split second and then it will stop working so we need to go to the control tab and just wrap this up in a forever loop and that's going to be attached to our code up here 
We'll give it a test run. It's not going to be working properly, but we'll see how that's looking at the moment. So we can move left and right. And you see when I press the space bar, my board actually appears on the page. Okay, but it hasn't started moving yet. So we need to add a little bit more code in to make it move. Okay, we actually want this to move until it hits the edge of our page, which is back up the top here. So what we're going to do in the control tab here is bring out a section of code called repeat until and wrap that around the word move 10 steps. Okay, so I'll just bring this out so you can see it. So it's repeat until and we're going to go to sensing and that first option that says touching mouse pointer, we're going to change it to edge. So we're going to repeat this piece of code. So it's going to move at speed 10 until that bullet touches the edge of the page. Okay, so I'm going to put that back up under show there and we're going to give this a bit of a test run to see what happens okay so we run the game press spacebar and our bullet comes out it's actually going right instead of up so what we're going to need to do is change the direction this bullet's going okay so that's fairly simple to do just go to your motion tab here and we want to point this bullet in a direction okay so at the start straight under when we click the start button we want to point that bullet in the up direction at the moment it's pointing at 90 degrees which is the right set it to zero which is straight up we'll just test that again and we'll see what happens there we go so now it's pointing straight up the issue is now it's getting stuck at the top of the page okay we want to fix that issue as well alrighty so basically we need to put in some code to say when it hits the top of the page we need to hide it again. Okay, so it's basically, basically, if I just separate this for a sec, these two lines of code here repeated down the bottom. So I'm just going to duplicate those two lines of code and put them in just underneath the repeat until section. So down here, and I'll connect these back up. So just double check your code's all the same as mine there, and hopefully when I run this, our bullet will disappear when it hits the top of the page. Yeah, so that's looking good now. It hits the top of the page and it disappears. Alright, so that's basically our bullets working. So all we've got left to do now is just a little bit more work on the bat. Okay, so a collision between the bat and the bullet. So when we hit the bat with a bullet, we want to earn some points and we want that bat to disappear and die. Alright, so we're going to go back to our bat sprite over here and we're going to add a little bit more code onto that. So in the events section here, bring out another when the start button is clicked. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. Okay, so a number that can change. It can store information and it can change. And in this game, it's going to store it's going to store our score. So in the data section, make a variable called score. And leave for all sprites checked and click OK. You'll see that your score appears in the top left of the page. When we start our game, we want to make sure that our score is set to zero. Okay, so that way our game always starts from scratch with a clean slate. What we want to do then is bring in an if-then statement again. So over here, we're going to bring out the if-then. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to see if that bullet is touching the bat. So we go to sensing, and the first option that says touching mouse pointer, we want to change that to bullet. So if the bat is touching the bullet, then what do we want to do? We basically want to hide the bat, which basically means it dies. Okay. When we hide the bat, we also want to go to data and change our score by one. Okay, that's just going to give ourselves one point in our score there. So our variable is going to change. Okay, if I was to put that straight in now, that wouldn't work because we need to put it inside a forever loop. We want this piece of code running the whole time our game is being played. So we wrap it in a forever loop and it's always listening out now our game for whether or not the bullet is touching the bat. If it is, then we hide the bat and we add one to our score. Alright, so let's test this out now by hitting the green flag at the top and we'll see if we can shoot a bat. Okay. Missed him that time. Bang, got him. He disappeared alright, the score went up, but it looks like our bat has completely disappeared and he's not coming back. So that's because we've hidden him down here once we've shot him. What we need to do is tell the game for this bat to reappear or show again 
once we've killed him. So, what we need to do is go to our looks tab here, and you'll see the show option. All we need to do is drag that up and put it back up in this first section of code we have, just above those two blue lines of code. So basically when we start our game, we're going to have that bat show at the top of our page. Okay. When we kill him, he's hidden. Okay. But because this code is forever looping, okay, it's going to show him again at the top of the page, and he'll be appearing somewhere along the x-axis at the top, and then he will glide back down to the bottom. Okay. And it's continually going to happen. So let's test it out one more time with that little bit of show code, and we'll see if that fixes our problem. Oops. Didn't get the bullet away quick enough. Let's try again. Okay, so we shot him, and you can see now the bat is reappearing. Doesn't reappear straight away, but close enough. And you see our score going up each time we shoot the bat. Alright, so that is basically it. That is our game all done and dusted. So just double check that you've got the same code as me on the spaceship. You can pause the video and just double check for any mistakes. There's my bat code, and there's my bullet code. Alright, once you're done, make sure you go to File and Save As. You do want to save this, probably in a new folder. You can call it whatever you want. I might just call it Space Shooter. I'll open that folder up and I'll give it a name, Space Shooter, and save it. Alrighty, so you can go up to full screen if you'd like and play that game again. You should see the score reset when we run the game. Go back to zero. Okay. You can see that our game's working pretty nicely. If I get hit by the bat, that's game over. Everything just stops. Okay. So that is a working space shooter game.